That brings us to the topic of RDD actions. Remember, transformations apply some sort of operation to a source RDD and create a new RDD. Actions take an RDD and, as it were, summarize the results or run some kind of computation across all of the elements and produce an output. The thing that's important to remember about actions is that they actually trigger work being done. When you call transformations on one RDD to another, it sure looks like you're writing code. It looks like you're doing things. Spark is just remembering what you say until you get to an action. When you take action, then it can infer what sort of data it needs to take action on and run all of the transformations in its dependency graph. Uh, that produce the RDD on which the action is to be executed. Again, I'm going to show you just a few common actions so you get a taste of what the API is like. Then we'll look at some examples that put these things to use. Collect, you've seen already. What that does is that returns an array with all of the elements of the source RDD. Count is simply going to count the total number of the elements of the source RDD. Reduce. Now, reduce creates an aggregate value by taking some function and repeatedly applying it to pairs of elements and intermediate results in the source RDD. So a bit more intuitively, if you had a bunch of numbers in an RDD and you wanted to add them or multiply them or something like that, reduce would be the way to do it. You'll call reduce, you'll pass a function that says add one element to another, and Spark will handle organizing all of the elements and making sure all of the elements get reduced and all of their intermediate results get reduced together to produce a single number as output. Now, of course, reduce can also produce custom data types. It doesn't need to be a scalar, uh, but the trivial examples and the things that we've looked at already use reduce to add numbers. And that's very easy to see when you're just getting started. Take returns an array with the first n elements of the RDD. Now, collect returns an array with everything in it. But if you know you've got a big RDD and you're only interested in the first five or 10 or 20 or 30 results or something like that, then you can call take and just get that uh, easier to deal with data set back. First is like a special case of take. It's just taking the first one. We also have for each that executes a given function on every element of the source RDD. We've already shown you some examples where we passed print line as that function. So we'll collect the results and for each them. Or you can even just directly for each an RDD. Save as text file creates a side effect in the system. It takes that RDD and writes it to a text file in the local file system. And save to Cassandra is one example of the way that we can output data to a Cassandra table. That API, of course, gets a little richer, and we'll look at those details in a separate module. Let's look at an example. Again, this is the data we're looking at. We have seven elements. They're movies, simple strings with a title, a comma, and a release year, all created from that list literal that's parallelized into the Spark context and made into an RDD. Here's an example of filtering for all movies that have a release year of 2010. That's pretty simple. We've seen how that works in the transformation world already, but now we'll explicitly collect that. That means we're going to get an array of two elements, and that array is going to be returned to the Spark shell, and then we're calling the foreach method on that array. Count, trivially, doesn't get a lot easier than this. We'll take our RDD and count its elements and get the number as the result reduce. Here's an example of counting something up. Now, in our data right now, we don't have anything that really lends itself to counting or to aggregation. So uh, we're going to contrive something. We're going to say, how many characters are there in all of the movie titles we have in our substantial seven element RDD? Let's look at the code. We're going to grab all of the, the characters, that's the substring call there, except the comma, the space, and the release year. That's assuming four digit release years and no trailing spaces, but that works for us. We'll take the length of that substring. That's the map. So we'll take the RDD and make a new RDD that contains numbers. That's what that map call does. The new RDD contains the lengths of the titles in the source RDD. So that intermediate RDD, which you don't even really think of, you don't see, we're not even diagramming it. It's just kind of there in the system. We've created it and it's this sort of ephemeral thing that comes and goes in the service of our computation. We'll take that RDD and call the reduce method on it. And reduce expects two parameters. We're calling them X and Y. And what we're gonna do is add them. So those will be the length values of two separate elements of the input RDD, 
or an element of the input RDD and an intermediate computation. The framework handles that. We don't know anything about it. We're just saying, apply this function over and over and we'll be okay. And in fact, we are, we get the number 72 as a result. Now to cover for each, we're gonna use a feature called accumulators. Accumulators get their own treatment in a separate section, but for now, let me give you a quick overview so you know what to expect. An accumulator is a distributed counter. It's not data that we need to manage or think about where it exists. It's just a thing that we give a name to, we create it, we give it an initial value, and we increment it when we want. Looking at the code, you see that we create two accumulators up front, one called total count and one called total length. We again map the movies RDD to extract just the title string. And then our action is to iterate over each of those elements and increment the total count of elements that we've received and the length of the strings that we have seen so far. So we have a total number of characters and a total number of elements. Then when we're done with that, of course, it becomes straightforward to calculate an average. That gives you an idea of some of the basics of how to get started with Spark, run a simple hello world program, and think about the fundamental data abstraction or these resilient distributed data sets or RDDs. We're gonna work with RDDs in every single example, just about everything we do with Spark, RDDs will be involved. Hopefully you've gotten a picture of what they are, how they're put together, how we operate on them, their API, and a few examples of how to use them in actual running code.